Frederick Sanger developed a method of base sequencing DNA that subsequently became known as Sanger sequencing. In this video, we'll see how the use of nucleotides containing dideoxyribonucleic acid are used to stop DNA replication in preparation of samples for base sequencing. So since this process is used to determine the order of bases in a piece of DNA, you would obviously be starting with a piece of DNA for which the base sequence is unknown. So in this process of trying to determine the base sequence, the first thing that happens is the piece of DNA is put through DNA replication. Now we know that during DNA replication, there's a base pairing rule, so that nucleotides containing adenine will bind with nucleotides containing thymine, and nucleotides containing cytosine bind with nucleotides containing guanine. However, in Sanger sequencing, the difference is that the nucleotides that are provided for DNA replication are a mix of normal deoxyribonucleic acid nucleotides and these special nucleotides called dideoxyribonucleic acid nucleotides. Now thankfully this can be abbreviated to DDNTP. But just like the normal nucleotides, DDNTPs come with adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine. So you can have abbreviations of DDATP, DDTTP, DDCTP and DDGTP. Now the main difference structurally between DDNTPs and the normal deoxyribonucleic acid nucleotides is that the dideoxyribonucleic acid nucleotides do not have a hydroxyl group on carbon number three. But the most important thing that you need to know is that dideoxyribonucleic acid nucleotides or DDNTPs stop DNA replication. Remember that we are adding a mix of DDNTPs and the normal nucleotides, but every time a DDNTP is added, replication stops. So we can simulate Sanger sequencing using genecube.org. So if you go to this site, you will find that there is a set of instructions down the side to indicate how to use the simulator. Now at the top, you will see the unknown DNA sequence, and this is the sequence we're trying to determine using the normal deoxyribonucleotides and the DDNTPs. So essentially you're going to mix it all together, the unknown piece of DNA, the deoxyribonucleotides and the DDNTPs. And at the bottom you have a slider for the percentage of DDNTP you wish to use. Now remember the higher the percentage of DDNTP, the higher the chance that DDNTPs will bind as opposed to the normal deoxyribonucleotides. And this means that replication therefore stops and fragments of DNA of various lengths are formed. However, if the percentage of DDNTP is too high, then replication is always going to stop early and you're not going to form fragments that cover the entire length of the piece of DNA you wish to sequence. However, if the percentage of DDNTP is too low, then replication never gets stopped and you don't form the fragments that you need to base sequence the entire piece of DNA. So you can toggle this percentage and try and find one that works for you, but essentially what you're going to do is then start to base sequence up against the piece of DNA. But whether you get the deoxyribonucleotides or the DDNTPs is dependent upon that percentage that you choose in the mix. However, notice that each time a DDNTP binds, DNA replication stops. So you end up producing fragments of DNA that are of various lengths, depending on how far down the piece of DNA you got to before the DDNTP bound. Now eventually you will repeat this process so many times, as represented here by all of the different rows, that you'll end up with DNA fragments ranging from a length of just one nucleotide to the entire length of the piece of DNA that you're trying to sequence. Now we can use gel electrophoresis to separate these fragments of different sizes, whereby the smallest fragments travel furthest away from the origin and the largest fragments remain closest to the origin. Now notice that these are arranged by the DDNTP that bound and cause DNA replication to stop. Notice also that each of the different DDNTPs has a different colored fluorescent marker on it, and these can be read by a machine that can then determine the base sequence of the DNA. The smallest fragment at the top would be marking the beginning of the DNA sequence. So the fluorescent markers are detected in order of the colors observed from the smallest fragment down to the largest fragment. 
These different fluorescent colours detected are associated with the different DNA bases, therefore producing the complementary base sequence to the original piece of DNA.